Hey, welcome to Speed Trap Consulting's review and description of another turbocharger that we have on the market. Today we're talking about the Predator turbocharger. This has actually been out for about eight months to about a year or so. And what we'll do is we'll go through our main five categories and we're actually going to add a different category with this uh, just to show that uh, there are definitely some things that you want to look at and think about when considering a turbo like this. So of course we're going to go through purpose, engine size application, power level and characteristics, composition, specifications, and lastly drawbacks. Uh, this is something that a few people have asked me uh, on a regular basis as if there are any drawbacks anything. Uh, there's no such thing as a perfect turbo but we want to make sure that you know as you go through your decision of doing this for regardless of your application that you know all the information and facts about it as much as you can and uh, so you can make a really informed decision. Okay let's get started. We're actually going to go into purpose first uh, as opposed to engine size application uh, because really that's kind of what's important here. The purpose of this turbocharger is actually twofold. Uh, first, it was a, an upgrade idea that we decided to make for the Silver Surfer. Uh, we wanted to extend its power range a bit more for at least another 100 horsepower while at the same time still trying to keep a nice compact package and make sure that it's still uh, reasonably affordable. Uh, in addition, we knew that there were going to be some things that we were going to give up over the Silver Surfer for which it was originally designed, uh, as well as uh, ensure uh, that you can get the higher upper end power that the surfer uh, can't always deliver when you're going past 530 wheel horsepower. Uh, we know it's not all about power but we do know that there is a gap in to fill for that need and this is definitely the answer. The second reason why uh, this one was developed was because of the fact that uh, a much more well matched and popular version of the GTX series uh, has been released for about three years now especially for the larger uh, four-cylinder inline and boxer four-cylinder class as well as the six-cylinder class of uh, turbochargers uh, and that is the, the GTX 3576R. Uh, it's a fantastic turbocharger that uses the compressor wheel of the GTX 3076R uh, but they fixed their mistake from using too small of a turbine wheel uh, instead of using the N32 60mm turbine wheel they used the N111 68mm turbine wheel that shared with the GTX and standard GT35Rs. So what we decided to do was see about the fact that if there was a possibility of making something that was very similar in characteristics and response and at the same time a little bit easier on the pocket whether you go journal bearing or ball bearing. We really think this is it. For the engine size application for four cylinder this is for 1.8 to 2.5 liters those with a good flowing cylinder head uh, that as well as for the six cylinder class it's made for the 2.5 to 3.7 liter range. Uh, this goes anywhere from the RB uh, engine platforms to the VQ 3.5 and 3.7 liter platforms as well as some of the uh, American V6 engine platforms uh, which they can or cannot use them as twin sets uh, but most of them use these as a single unit. For the 8 cylinder category of course sky's the limit anywhere from 4 liter to 5 liter uh, most of the individuals that really want to use this type of turbochargers get them as a set of twins as opposed to single and uh, they really want to be able to push the limits to it but still be a little bit less of a size than say those of 68 pounds a minute or larger. Well let's look at power level and characteristics. Uh, for a single unit you're looking at about 600 to 650 wheel horsepower uh, that's very similar uh, to the GTX 3576R in terms of its power output. And as a twin set, this goes anywhere from about 1100 to 1150 wheel horsepower. So that's where uh, this kind of turbocharger flows within its range. For the characteristics of this, uh, what we try to do with this, and we think we've really been successful so far, is take the mid range uh, uh, characteristics of the Silver Surfer and create higher top end with it, especially for those that are over two liters in size, have a high flowing efficiency head, uh, want to make over 600 wheel horsepower on higher knock resistant fuel, uh, and at the same time res resemble a very small space and structured turbo. Uh, what we wanted to make sure also was that it still stayed in a reasonably compact package. Uh, because we know that a lot of times there's just not enough room when you're retrofitting turbochargers of universal size uh, onto this uh, onto a lot of these platforms. 
So we wanted to ensure that this was also a bolt up uh, for those that had your T3, T04E, Garrett, 50, 57, and 60 trims, really wanted to bump up in uh, power and at the same time just didn't have the room to uh, change uh, for space requirements for this. So that's where we went here. Well, let's look at the effective boost pressure range of the Predator. That's actually a little bit higher than that of the Silver Surfer and about the same as that as the GTX 3576R, which is from 14 PSI to about 31 PSI boost pressure in terms of effective range. The reason for that, of course, is because of the fact that we're using a fantastic um, six splitter blade uh, that's T6 775 uh, billet aluminum. Uh, that was definitely designed for much more higher rotational speeds, uh, similar to the GTX 3576R, but the characteristics are a little more concentrated on mid-range and top-end than just low-end power. For the effective RPM range for all three of these categories, we found that for the four-cylinder category, the effective range for this type of turbocharger, for those that want to look at responsiveness anywhere from the 4200 to 9000 RPM range, so those for about a 1.8 or 2.5 liter. For the six cylinder category, and I'm going to talk about this as a single unit, not as twins, uh, you're looking at an effective RPM range of about 3,800 to 6,800 RPMs. These are those that are going to be in the 2.5 liter, the 3.7 liter class. Uh, that's going to have at least a better intake camshaft, a little bit higher lift and duration. Those that really want to be able to take advantage of the mid-range power capability of this turbo and at the same time still be able to retain uh, a lot of drivability characteristics. For the 8-cylinder category, I'm going to talk about this simply as a single unit. Its RPM range in terms of its effective use is going to be from about 3200 to about 6800 RPMs. Uh, that's for those that are about a four liter or larger engine. Okay. Let's look at the composition. Again, this is a Garrett STC hybrid turbocharger. Right now what I'm showing you is the ball bearing version. Uh, the general bearing version is slightly different, but shows a lot of the similar features. The ball bearing version uh, uses a lot of the same fitment equipment as you would with the GTX 3576R or any other turbocharger that's using a GT30R to GT35R class type of setup. What that typically means then is that we're using, as a requirement for the ball bearing, 14 millimeter uh, actual water fittings here. Okay. The general bearing version uses 3, 3 8 and PT water fittings for this and it's considered an option. These though, for this particular turbocharger, it's actually a requirement. Okay. And just like with the other uh, ball bearing Garrett turbochargers that you see, this uses a 7 16 okay, dash 24 uh, 30 thousandths restrictor. That's recommended. Now a lot of people ask whether or not a restrictor is actually needed for this particular turbocharger, or any of them for that matter. And the answer is it's all about the oil pressure. Anything that's going to be over 75 pounds to over 120 pounds of oil pressure that's going to be over at the line itself is definitely going to need a, a type of restriction. Because of the fact that the ball bearing turbochargers use a bit more friction and have higher tolerances for it, not as much oil is needed. Uh, so that's why the restrictor regulates this particular oil pressure down to about 22 psi. And it's definitely a requirement for those anybody over 75 psi. The water lines also are a requirement, and like I said, 14 millimeter. But here's the interesting part about it. Unlike the other GTR and GTX series, uh, this actually still uses a standard T3 T04E half inch return flange. So that means that for those that were trying to upgrade from their T3 T04E uh, turbochargers that were working properly, now they have uh, the safety and reliability of understanding that they can now use their standard. Uh, drain flange in order to be able to fit with a turbocharger despite the fact uh, that it uses these specific fittings. For the journal bearing version, like I said, these are 3 8 NPT uh, water fittings and these use a 1 8 NPT uh, uh, restrictor fitting in a 60 to 65 thousandths for anybody that's going to have over 75 to 80 psi of oil pressure. Also, let's take a look at this. Uh, in the back here, uh, this still uses the same Garrett turbine housing from the factory. Still uses the standard 2.5 inch uh, uh, four bolt uh, turbine housing. There is a uh, Ford style five bolt that's available for uh, typically they have a small additional cost with it. 
T4 housings are available, but really only in open uh, right now. Uh, not exactly in um, a, a V-band or, or, or any type of T3 3-inch V-band uh, or a tile V-band at this point in time. Uh, the main reason is because of the fact that unlike the GTR and GTX series, uh, this uses a different um, cartridge uh, circumference to be able to fit within the flanging system of the turbine housings. Uh, but we're working on these kinds of things and uh, it'll start to come up well sooner or later. Well, let's look at the specifications of this really. Really uh, not all that different than what you see in a lot of T3, T04E turbochargers. This is uses a T04E uh, compressor cover with a 3 inch inlet. Uh, this particular uh, boost reference fitting is considered to be an additional option because not all the housings are coming in like this. The cool part about it, of course, the STC 6x6 uh, splitter blade, about 60 pounds a minute compressor wheel. Uh, we're looking at about uh, something that's going to be a range of, again, about 600 to 650 wheel horsepower. It uses a 3 millimeter extended tip on its exducer. It's a fantastic uh, compressor wheel that's really, really made to go for higher rotational speeds that a lot of these uh, new applications are using. Again, standard uh, Garrett hardware in terms of the turbine bolts and the housings. Standard turbine housing here is, like I said before, T3 uh, inlet using a 2.5 inch 4 bolt turbine housing. And again, a 5 bolt is, a, is Ford style is available. Uh, as is shown right here, I've got the optional uh, high heat coatings on both the turbine and the compressor housings for an additional cost. Lastly, let's look at the drawbacks of this turbo. What are some things that uh, people would find uh, that may be a drawback with it? Uh, the main thing that we found more than anything uh, as a drawback is the fact that it's still using this type of flanging system. Uh, we know that a lot of people, as well as uh, with, from other companies, uh, have some flexibility of being able to use uh, V-band turbine housings to be able to fit with that or that they're able to uh, weld a type of uh, weld flange to the particular turbine housing we don't really recommend that uh, we recommend really using a uh, 2.5 inch to 3 inch V-band conversion flange that's a different video uh, that shows how to be able to convert that uh, to a V-band that's the other part of that one uh, drawback is the fact that when you put the actual V-band onto this, it extends this particular turbo at about an inch or so. So for those that wanted to convert to V-band and had other accessories like alternator, condenser, or other power steering apparatus issues where fitment is really of the utmost importance, uh, this could be a drawback to that person if they want to retain AC or power steering, uh, adding that particular flange to it. But we're still developing and working with uh, other companies, especially to be able to work with uh, better turbine housing options to be able to fit with this. Uh, the one thing we just want to make sure is that just like with the Garrett, it has burst containment, it's of the right material, and uh, it's able to have that great uh, idea of reliability, repairability, and rebuildability. Well, that's it for my review. I know this is a little bit longer uh, than usual. Uh, but if there's any questions, give us an email at info at speedtrackconsulting.com. And as always, happy boosting and take care.